Good evening and welcome back truly to our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. After taking one week off to re-celebrate Plunky here in Richmond, Virginia, ahead of the Second Street Festival, we're back for another new installation of our Jazz Cafe featuring the guys on stage with me, the Kevin Gaines Quartet.
take a minute to introduce these guys to you. Uh, first up on piano, he's an institution of jazz <laughs> in Richmond and beyond. <laughs> Dr. Weldon Hill on piano. On bass, I've got a lot of knowledge with this guy, a lot of knowledge. He's a bad boy. On bass, Mr. Matt Hall. On guitar, my dear friend, he's a bad boy too, Mr. Alan Parker on guitar. Uh, that was a tune called Beautiful Love, and uh, we'll play some more tunes for you. I'd be remiss if I did not give a shout out to Richmond Jazz Society for having us, uh, the BMFA for hosting us, and for uh, to Robert for moderating us, keeping us in check. All right, let's play some tunes, guys.
Kevin Gaines Quartet. I'll tell you guys, that first set has me feeling wrapped up in musical nostalgia. It's sounds I heard growing up. Come now, the four of you who weren't there when I, I mean, you were around, but you weren't there, <laughs> weren't there when I was growing up. Thank you, fellas, for that first set. I think it's time for a good break. And Kevin, would you teach us a little bit more about yourself and how you put this together for us tonight? Sure. Right over here. All right, to Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, thank you so much, sir, for that first set of exceptional music. And I know we've got another second set coming up. Um, uh, music that's just as good if it's not better. <laughs> Before we get into a conversation, the two of us, would you take a moment to tell the folks at home something about yourself in your own words? Uh, I'm Kevin Gaines, born and raised in Richmond, VA. Um, I'm actually an IT person by day hmm. <laughs> and uh, doing what I love all the other times that I can, which is playing drums, man. I, I, and I play them because I love to play drums. You know, I like how you said that. I'm a IT by day and drummer, musician all the other times, not just by night. Exactly. Whenever exactly. The, so what, what got you into music to begin with? Yeah, well, I was a clarinet player originally, uh, fourth grader, of course, wanted to play drums. You go into the cafeteria, Maurice Williams, mm -hmm. who's a great music teacher, and um, tell me, son, what you want to play? I said, I want to play drums, sir. He's, he just nodded his head. He says, uh, well, if I let everybody play drums, hmm that wanted to play drums, I'd have a whole band full of drummers. Mm -hmm. You're playing clarinet, tell your parents to reach out to Boykin's music and, you know, get that clarinet. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and that, the rest happened. <laughs> that, that was my start. <laughs> what is it, um, what is about the drums, do you think, that calls all of us to it? The first thing I did as music was beat a drum. <laughs> I'll tell you, like uh, uh, a friend of mine's in New York, Michael Carvin, who's a master drummer, and he says, his, his famous line is, hey man, drums are your birthright. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and and it, that one statement is so deep, mm -hmm. and, and I always think about it when I think about him. He says, your birthright, man. It's like I almost ain't have a choice. <laughs> what do you think? How do you think that manifested itself in you? I mean, we're watching you pick apart those rhythms here tonight, but where did that love for rhythm come from? Uh, just a household of music. You know, my, my mom sung in the choir. My mm -hmm. dad was not a musician, but he was an avid, avid listener. And he had uh, his, I guess his favorite was Charlie Parker. He had mm -hmm. every Charlie Parker re record he had all of them, Charlie Parker with strings, Charlie Parker with quartet, I mean, so mm -hmm. all that stuff. And, and trust me, I did not like that stuff <laughs> as a youngster, you know. Uh, it'd be almost like a time out, man. Come here, boy, sit down here and listen. You don't know about no music. Sit down here and listen to this, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, he'd sip a little scotch. And, <laughs> He's playing in and I'm like, oh my God, how much longer? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, uh, but that, that was, I mean, he, he listened to everything. Aretha Franklin, I mean, James Brown, Miles mm -hmm. Davis, I mean, the whole gamut. His album collection was pretty intense. I mean, you're, so. you're talking about a time where music was really developing into something outstanding. It right. already was, but getting some, some new sounds of Aretha. And, right. You know, uh, James Brown. James teaching Brown? Us how, teaching us all how to dance. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. James Brown. Oh. Teaching us all how to dance. Oh, no say. doubt. No doubt, man. I, I show my daughter videos of James Brown. She's 19, but I show her videos of James Brown. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is probably where Michael got a lot of stuff Definitely. From. <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I had a chance to talk to um, Wanda Hutchinson of The Emotions, and she talked about watching Michael watch people like James Brown or even herself and see, seeing how he was picking up stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Just learning from the greats around us. True that, man. Tell me about some of your experiences learning from the greats you've had the opportunity to play with. 
I'm sorry, say that one more time. Some of the uh, great experiences you've had playing with some of the greats on stage yourself. Oh, well, you know, I count every gig as a blessing mm. because, I mean, I'm, most of the guys that I play with are formally 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 trained mm -hmm. in music you know they're music majors right and I was not a music major <laughs> by any stretch right. but I love to play so much I just worked hard I just I just worked hard I practice mm -hmm. I practice I do practice. the best you can but you got yeah and it's, it's at this stage I am like a kid in a candy store playing with all of these musicians that I so greatly respect, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's a gravy train playing with all these guys, man. Speaking of musicians you respect, tell me about these guys on stage with you here tonight. Oh my goodness, man. I'll start with Matt Hall. Matt and I, as I said in the, in the beginning, that we have a lot of music mileage. Mm -hmm. I first met, met Matt he was a freshman at VCU, okay. and we started playing a weekly Thursday night gig, and that was, oof, man, that's got to be in the, now I'm trying to figure out how old Matt is. <laughs> <laughs> But the, 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 the moral of that story is we've been playing together off and on for mm. all of these years. Mm. I mean, he, he left and went to Turkey for about 10 years. And uh, when he came back, I'm like, thank goodness you're back, man. Let's, mm. uh, let's pick up where we left off. So um, That's a strong friendship. Oh, my goodness, man. Strong and, partnership. And he's a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this that, uh, y'all rewind and listen to them playing Someday again. That was, that was oh, wild. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's uh, my Matt history. Uh, Weldon, I mean, he needs no introduction. I As I say. said, man, he's an institution of jazz all on his own yeah. and other styles as well. Um, I mean, what is there to say about, about the doctor? And I, I don't know, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I, I can't remember our first gig together, but uh, Weldon is a cat I always learn from. Mm -hmm. Every gig, after every gig, I don't learn something. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did one tune tonight, Helen's song. Uh, that's a George Cable's tune. And Weldon hipped me to that tune. Mm -hmm. And when I say hipped me to it, <laughs> He called it on his gig. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he just started playing the intro. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he hipped me to it. <laughs> Kyle didn't have a choice on that. Yeah, exactly. Was, playing exactly. Helen's song. Exactly. You know, and then I was like, wow, I love that tune, Welder. What is it? <laughs> uh, and needless to say, it's, uh, it's on my list now as, yes. as we played it tonight. So. What about Alan? Oh uh, man, he's a dear friend of mine, man. He's a, now on top of being ridiculously talented, mm -hmm. man. This guy, he blows me away every time I play with him mm -hmm. or listen to him. I get blown away by this guy. I but agree uh, with that. we're very good friends, very close friends. Um, in fact, uh, my daughter has, has babysat his son, you know, so mm -hmm. we, you know, we got a, you know, Pretty locked in friendship, man. And I, I admire that dude because, like I say, he's ridiculous, man. I mean, we're, we're hearing that here tonight, the way those fingers move. Oh, my goodness. On a man. fretted instrument. That's my kryptonite. I can't do it. Right, right, right. And, you know, sometimes I get caught up listening to these guys. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep playing it and not be in awe mm -hmm. of what I'm hearing. And all these guys, they, they just keep me in awe. Well, I mean, you yourself, too, have done quite some magical stuff here tonight with those sticks in your hand. How have you kept your skill as sharp as it is now throughout a time when we, I mean, all of us musicians, we had a time uh, when we really weren't gigging at all. How did you stay so together? Well, uh, the practice pad, mm -hmm. got banging on that practice pad, you know, 
while I'm watching a football game or mm -hmm. watching sports or, or watching whatever, you know, I try to put in, you know, the goal is every day, I'll take five days a week off. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? We'll be real honest. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like getting seven out of me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, and I, I, I run a practice space to where I can mm -hmm. go and, and work out, you know, when I need the full kit and everything. So. so that's how you've kept your skill together, but how do you keep the sound with a group like these guys together, which we can't really get together the way we once could. Yeah, well, our get together was standing around that piano talking about the tunes we were gonna play tonight. <laughs> now, full disclosure, I did, I do have a list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's just my scratch handwriting and, you know, I wrote out some tunes and I text those guys and says, uh, what y'all want to do? And they, they said nothing, of course. So yeah. they put on. <laughs> Your gig. You yeah. They don't say nothing. So I'm literally, you know, writing down tunes. I was like, okay, the timelines, mm -hmm. probably four, four each set, you know, would, mm -hmm. would work for this. And um, I kept scratching through this first, this second, you know. So when I showed them to them, they're like, how about you tell us this order so we can put it on our yeah. phone or whatever, because we can't read that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, can't man. read the chicken scratch. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm scratching. This was one. This was, no, I don't scratch that. So. Well, as a drummer, coming to it from, from the rhythm side, mm -hmm. what kind of story are you trying to tell when you're putting your set list together? Um, I, I, I basically try to, you know, a, address like all all the formations well not all the formations but i try to address like swinging oh, i okay. address the latin and my favorite time signature is three four mm -hmm. so we did a couple of numbers in three four because that, that's uh, that is so organic for me just so nat that's a natural rhythm for me three mm. four and and uh so I was like, well, two of the tunes going to be in three. <laughs> <laughs> if we play in eight tunes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we did a Charlie Parker tune, uh, um, uh, little suede, My Little Suede Shoes, mm -hmm. and that was that Latin. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you swing, you waltz, you Latin. And uh, so it is about mixing the rhythms that you can hear. Or that you can play yourself? Uh, for me, it, it's rhythmically, when I'm playing, I, I am actually thinking melody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I am playing the melody in my head. As sometimes it comes out verbally, which can be kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, like, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, you, when you're, you're, you're voicing the, the melody of the song. Mm -hmm. And... and uh, <laughs> That's like my buoy system. I know where I am. <laughs> you gotta pay attention. And yes. then, you, you know, it, it um, that's how I approach tunes. Rhythmically, I do it with the melody. I imagine that also uh, lends itself to solo playing from the set. Yeah, I'm trying to articulate the melody. My goal is, uh, for you to hear where I am mm. in the melody by making by making certain statements, making certain statements in uh, with, with with which instruments most primarily is it the cymbal is it the drum is it the kick? What is it yeah. that sings most yeah. for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah, all of it. Yeah, I mean it. Um, uh, and even the cymbals is multiple things. I mean. You know, striking the cymbal like mm -hmm. this, as well as striking it like this, and you got the bell. So you can get all kinds of sounds just out of the cymbal alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, you for me, it's it's just um, putting things rhythmically in place <laughs> in the form of the song. Mm -hmm. and kind of stating the melody at some point, you know, at some portions, not the whole melody, but enough to where, you know, 
people realize, oh, that's what he, uh, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. he had the bridge. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Well, you know, and I, I think it's in my mind so much right now because we learned a few minutes ago that you all really just got together tonight around the piano to figure out what you were going to do. But you played so organically. Uh, I'm, I told you already that second, second piece you played, uh, Someday My Prince Will Come, it sounded to me like four soloists playing their own thing, <laughs> grooving by themselves in the same moment together. But somehow you came out of that four soloists playing an ensemble and came back to one group. How do you do that? That's a lot of trust it must have. I will say so. And, and that's the, the level of musicians that mm -hmm. you're playing with. And, and I'm fortunate to where, I mean, these guys and many, there is so much musical talent in this town. Mm. It is so much. That's a, that's a lot of truth. I mean, so it, 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 nearly all the formations that you play with is going to be, have that organic, because that's how good these cats are. These, mm -hmm. these cats are killing, man. They can play. Educators. It's got yeah. some great educators right here in our backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Weldon's one of them. Yeah. Whew. He's scary, man. <laughs> <laughs> he dude, is scary. You know, he, dude scares me, man. His, his, in uh, the best way. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He, he's scary. And, man, and, uh, well, all three of those guys, man, that, that's, this was the perfect unit for this perfect night. How often, or does it at all, does your, um, your musical life and your IT life blend together? How does that work for you? Uh, fortunately for me, um, <laughs> I've been in IT a very, very long time. Um, my current job, 25 years. Congratulations. And uh, thank you. And uh, the thing about it is um, I have so much flexibility. Mm. I've never been late or missed a gig. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> this is going to be on air? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be telling the truth. So I'm going to fact check you. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've never um, had to bail on a gig because of work. And uh, there's good and bad in it. The good thing is uh, I have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but that flexibility works both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, when I get home from the gig, no matter what time, I'm dialing in, checking all my stuff, and you know. So they trust me and I trust them. You know, that can sometimes be rough, finding that work-life balance. It, 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 it can be, but they, they, I've, I've, I've had a wonderful career, a wonderful career, to, to, because it allows me to do this mm -hmm. as much as I want or need. As much as I want or need. You know, this, is, uh, this has been my medicine for about a year and a half. Last week, we didn't get, I didn't get to have my medicine because we didn't shoot a show. Oh. Um, but I get to come to events like this and remember what music feels like even if I don't have a stick or a piano or a microphone. But it, it's fellas like you, musicians like you, they give me that inspiration to keep going. Where do you see music going tomorrow? Hmm. I mean, we're, we're in a state where we've never been in before. People are writing, people are working. I'm hearing new things come out of it. But what really do you think is going to happen at the end of all this? Man, I, I'll say it like this. Uh... These young cats coming out mm -hmm. are so ridiculous. Uh, in my mind, music is in good hands, man. Yeah. I mean, these, these guys, uh, they're at a level. I mean, these 20-somethings mm -hmm. mm -hmm. are coming into this at a level that, you know, it took me the 30 somethings, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? And, and it, uh, these guys, and I mean, all instruments, drums, piano, I mean, you, you, you pick it. I mean, there's some, some local guys around here now that, that <laughs> scared the devil out of me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm coming up to my 40s now myself, but I'm, I'm with you. I think some of what's coming out has got to be. Amazing. I mean, if you think centuries back, yeah, I love um, I love the Mozart Requiem for sure. Right. By right. the time Verdi writes his, there's so much more fire underneath that D.S.E. Right by that 
Would it have been there if Mozart didn't write his? Right. Who knows? Right. Truth. Truth, man. But, um, but I, I think um, the music is in good hands for tomorrow because these cats are killing it, man, at, a, at such a young age. That's, yeah, at, at you a know, very young age. They, they are killing it. And, uh, wow. Let's you and I keep making music. There you go. Keep finding our own inspiration and pass it on to those coming up. I'm, I'm still kind of coming up behind people myself. <laughs> but uh, this one day somebody's going to come up right. underneath behind me, and I hope I give them that inspiration too. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm positive of that, Doc. Uh, well, I'm Kevin, thank you so much for the conversation and for that first set of music. I think I'm ready for set two if you're ready to play it. Let's do it. All right, thank you much. Let's do it.
Is that <laughs> almost got us all in trouble? Right. Cameras are still rolling, gentlemen. <laughs> well, guys, thank you. So you know, it's about at least once a week, but sometimes several times a week, I get to share a stage somewhere with exceptional musicians like yourselves. And tonight was no exception to that rule. Thank you for the sights and the sounds and the inspiration to keep myself going and those on the other side of that lens as well. Thank you, BJ Brown. We've thanked you already, but we're gonna thank you again, Richmond Jazz Society, for sending us folks like this, for Dominion Energy, who keeps us going week after week. We can't do it without support from sponsors like yourselves. Remember Tommy Productions, who's always on the other side of that lens, and Chris up in that booth, we thank all of you as well. At home, you just lift this with me. I know you're just as warm as I am, so thank you for loving with us. Thank you for listening to us, and thank you again for learning from us. In Richmond, Virginia, at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts from the Leslie Cheek Theater stage, this has been our next edition of our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. I'm Robert Fennard. Good night. <laughs>